Yeah, so good morning, everyone. Thanks so much for, for joining us this morning uh, and for, for um, bringing your time to help us work through um, some work on the on the ratings characteristic characteristics. Um, I am uh, Dave James. I'm the deputy director of um, of policy and strategy here at CQC, and I lead on the regulatory model uh, work. And I'm joined by colleagues today from uh, from policy and strategy and beyond who are going to help us uh, with our with our session. Um, if you could take us on to the next slide, Sam. Um, so just a few housekeeping points on working together today. Uh, if you'd like to ask a question, please um, use the raise hand function, or you can also use the uh, chat box at the side of the screen. If you would like to use the live captions or subtitles uh, functionality, you can go to the top of the screen and select more, and then choose language and speech and turn on live captions if that um, is an option that you need. You'll be placed on mute whilst I take us through the presentation in a few moments. Um, we're going to go into breakout rooms today. And if um, something occurs to you that is perhaps kind of slightly to the left of, of what we're talking about, um, we do still want to capture that. So do please use the chat function um, so that we so that we don't lose any of those thoughts. We will be able to bring all those together and, uh, and play that into our thinking. We'll do our best to stick to time today. Um, we'll be recording this these main room sessions but not your breakout room sessions and if you could at the end of today um share your feedback on on how it's been for you uh, that would be really helpful for us to make sure that these events run as effectively as uh, as possible going forward and just a reminder that as we're working together today that we are uh, non-judgmental we're respectful supportive um we ensure that everyone has a voice and that we're able to uh, make sure that everybody uh, will listen to what others uh, are saying so that is the uh the housekeeping i'll just run through the agenda then um as i say in a minute i'll i'll, I'll kind of get us going with um with a bit of a rundown of uh, of the history i suppose of ratings characteristics uh, and where we are now and then specifically what we'd really welcome your thoughts on and then we'll go into breakout rooms there'll be a facilitator and a note taker in each of those rooms um, and uh, coming back here into the room, into the main room at quarter past 11, where we'll do some um, some key points feedback. Not probably won't be enough time to do um, kind of chapter and verse, but we will um, we will have all that from the note taken. And then we will finish at 11.30. Um, I suppose just 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 a point just before we get into this. Um, there's so much going on clearly at, at CQC at the moment and people will have lots of questions. Uh, we may well have time to get in some in, in some broader areas uh, at the end of the session, but um, uh, but if not, I, th I think the thing that I said earlier about that car park and 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 putting things in the chat function um, is is the best way to make sure that we make the best use of your time this morning. We really want to uh, really we really want to focus on on the task at hand, um, but we know that you'll have lots of uh, reflections and questions, so. Do feel free, please, to, to, to pose those in the chat and um, none of that will be lost. Uh, and this is the first of a number of sessions we'll be doing over the coming weeks and months as we as we uh, respond to the DASH report and the Mike Richards report and um, and, uh, and and deliver our recovery uh, approach. So that's the uh, agenda. If you can take us on to the next slide. Um, I mentioned Penny DASH and Mike Richards, so we welcome the findings of both those reports. They echo what we were aware of um, anyway from speaking to groups such as yourselves, from feedback from our colleagues internally. Uh, and we, accept, we, we accept the high level recommendations of, of both of those, uh, which clearly um, point to serious failings within CQC. And there's a lot of work happening uh, at pace to address these, uh, these, these issues. Um, three key areas uh, we're, we're focused on ensuring that we deliver a clear and transparent program of, uh, of, of inspections assessments and ratings uh, improving the registration process so it's quicker and more effective and uh, and improving the assessment process and um, making sure our reports are simpler and clearer if you take us on um there's a number of areas where activity is 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 happening uh, and that, that they're essential to us 
regaining your trust and the trust of others such as the public and others, other partners and stakeholders that, that, that we need frankly to do our job well. Um, these things are touched on in, in both of uh, uh, Penny Dash's and Mike Richards reports so uh, looking again at how the role of chief inspectors and how uh, leadership is structured and organised in, in the organisation uh, is one area reviewing how our assessment uh, framework has been implemented and, and, and how we um, how we improve that uh, uh, for providers and for our own colleagues as well who deliver those assessments. Having the right expertise in place at operational management level and above and updating our approach to relationship management. And then the focus for today sits under this, um, this section on the right hand side of the screen, which is improving uh, tools and guidance uh, for providers and, and also for others but um, I think in particular obviously today is is trying to understand your perspective and, and what what uh, how we can improve our offer to you in terms of tools and guidance specifically really relating to ratings characteristics and and scoring so if you could take us on again Sam um, I think I've already said that so that's good I'm ahead of myself um, and just to state the obvious it's we can't do our job well if we aren't making the time to to get your feedback and your thoughts on this um whenever we don't do that well that is when things go wrong frankly so um again just thank you for for for, for giving us your time today and your thoughts uh, as we have our discussions it will be uh, incredibly valuable and and will help us um uh, deliver an effective effective product and improve uh, how how we how we're delivering our our purpose uh, next slide, please, Sam. So what we've heard, I touched on this already, both from our assessment teams and from providers, is that the guidance on scoring and rating and uh, and what good looks like and the other levels of performance, what they look like, um, is is too light, and we need to uh, to address that. And this has been underscored in both independent reviews that uh, that I've mentioned. Um, it's, it's it's important, I think, to remember that okay, whilst we uh, whilst quality statements are new, it's a new framing, I suppose, of uh, of how we describe uh, quality and how we set out our methodology. Um, it's not it's not light years away from uh, the Chloe approach. It's kind of flipping the Chloe's uh, key lines of inquiry on on their head. Uh, turning them from questions into statements in, in a sense and, and doing uh, some of the legwork that we used to do in our characteristics of ratings. So they're really articulated as as expectations pitched at good, um, which start to get us down that road of, of, of setting out what, what, what good looks like under each of the um, key questions. We haven't shifted the bar in moving from that Chloe model to uh to the uh, assessment framework that we're now operating uh we've, we've not raised that bar or, or certainly not not dropped that bar so essentially what still what was good uh, before we moved to this framework uh, remains good and um the sector specific guidance which is on our website which gets into that in more detail is still perfectly valid it does uh, often refer to key lines of inquiry and perhaps other aspects of our of our former framework, uh, but we're working through that to update that. Um, we're also moving that content because uh, at the minute it's sitting in a separate part of our website and um, strikes me that that's not perhaps as helpful as it as it could be in being clear that um, all of that material still applies and that we're not you know we're not it's not kind of a scorched earth we're not starting again here we're, we're, we're certainly um, building on what we achieved with our chloe framework so we've heard really clearly that we want uh, that you want more more clarity on what the different levels of performance look like and how um uh, ratings characteristics which is a product we used to have under our approach how that can be uh, resurrected um and also how it can be enhanced now that we have those statements those quality statements um which we score. So what do descriptors at that level uh, look like as well? And how can they be most useful for you as providers? So that's what we're going to get into today. If you could take us on to the next slide. Um, this is a summary. I think you hopefully you've, you've seen these slides. There's quite a lot on here, but if, hopefully you'll have had a chance to, to, to look at these. Um, but I'm just run through this anyhow. So just comparing the uh, the, the old frameworks, the Chloe frameworks with um, our single assessment framework. 
what we had at key question level in terms of what good looks like um, was quite brief under the Chloe's. We've expanded that. So there's a, there's a couple of paragraphs now versus um, generally a single sentence under our previous framework. Um, in terms of what the other levels of, of performance look like, there was one or two sentences uh, for that in the um, in the characteristics of our Chloe framework. Um, we haven't published that because we've, um, as, as you'll be aware, we've essentially pitched um, pitched our framework at the level of good, and then we're, we're using scoring to to understand what's the deviation, positive or negative, from that. What's the level of deviation? Now, clearly, that's not worked, and that is very much what today is about. Um, so the starting position is that we need to get back to something like ratings characteristics. Um, at that topic level, so key line of inquiry level in the old model, uh, setting out what good looked like, for the most part, uh, that was set out in ratings characteristics. But our analysis showed when we were coming, when we were uh, starting to look at what a single assessment framework might look like and how we might improve on the Chloe framework, what we found was we didn't always have a, a line through from each key line of inquiry through to the ratings characteristics. So there would be kind of a, you know, the kind of the road would, would stop. Um, so that's something we definitely want to uh, uh, address. At the level of good, how we're doing that at the moment is the quality statements themselves. So as I've said, they're pitched at good and they, they articulate a, a commitment and a, and a, and a standard. Uh, there's guidance that sits beneath that, which which um, builds on that to explain what good looks like for that topic. And then in terms of what uh, what that would mean for people, we've got those I statements. So the, but again, there's perhaps more to be uh, get and in the discussions today. What more might we um, want to do uh, at that level um, beyond what we've already published? Still staying at, staying at that topic level, then what do the other levels of performance look like? Um, there was a couple of uh, sentences uh, in the Chloe framework that would do that for each uh, for each uh, for each Chloe, but as I said, not always uh, for every Chloe, um, and we don't have that at the moment. We've 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 done we've published good and using the scoring to understand uh, levels of variation from that. So again, that's in green text because that's what we're focused on today. How do we uh, best best do that? What do we need to produce there? And then I've mentioned the specific guidance that is organised uh, under sectors on our website. The the, the um, what good practice looks like um, for specific care models or perhaps populations. All of that material still stands, but it does need updating because of the language that it that it uses. And we continue to stay on top of uh, of that material in any case um, to make sure that our, gu our guidance stays up to date and moves with um, with best practice. Um, can we move on to the next? I think we're getting into the principles then. So the next few slides, if uh, let's see, let's see if this if this metaphor works. Um, the way I would describe these next four slides is if you put the ratings characteristics that we that we uh, previously published for the Chloe framework in, into a pot and uh, a, a, and and left it to boil with the lid off and reduced it down, what you would get essentially are the principles that are articulated across these these next four slides. So it's almost the source code, if you like. It's the it's the DNA of of of, of that longer text and those those pages of descriptions of what inadequate requires improvement, good and outstanding look like. They're essentially using these principles in relation to the key lines of inquiry to uh, to drive that guidance. Um, so this is a good and this is also essentially how we um how we evolved from the chloe approach to the scoring approach so these principles are also effectively describing the levels of the scores um so the one on the screen is uh is a score of four in the new model um or uh, in terms of rating it's it's an outstanding rating and these are the kinds of uh, terms and principles that apply um, to that level. So this is this is this is how the drafting of those ratings characteristic characteristics was um, was informed. Um, and one of the things that we really want to understand today is are are these still right? Can we tighten these? Can we improve these? And uh, 
you will know um, yourselves that actually describing outstanding is is probably the hardest thing to do uh-huh. actually so we'll start with the hardest one uh, essentially when we t- when we talk about outstanding we're talking about exceeding um, exceeding good we're going beyond good and beyond what best practice might uh, describe into into um, exemplary creative innovative, innovative approaches um, but always being able to pin that back to what's the actual impact on uh, on outcomes for people and on uh, on their experiences of of, uh, of of health and care. There's a sense that processes are fully embedded, and there's a there's a, a consistency there, um, and it's across all across all groups and all populations. Um, there's something about uh, going that extra mile. And again, linking that to what's the actual impact in terms of uh, the person-centred uh, approach and, and how people experience that that uh, that that uh, that care. Quite often, we also see in, in ratings of outstanding that providers are, are have a certain kind of a selfless selflessness, and they're 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 driving improvement beyond their beyond their realm, uh, and and affecting change uh, perhaps through the the wider system. And uh, at this level, we wouldn't see any breaches of regulations. If we move on to the next one, please. Um, so at the level of good, and in the single assessment framework, this is this is what we published. This is this is kind of our, our starting point. Um, it's in line with um, what we describe in the quality statement, in that we statement. It's in line with um, that supporting guidance that we've uh, published at the moment, and, and that is up for grabs today. If you think that doesn't go far enough, uh, we'd be really keen to understand that. Um, and it's in line with best practice, however that applies to to the circumstance. So, of course, that would be different for a GP versus um, um, a residential learner disability service or whatever it might be. But it's, it's how that translates uh, to uh, in line with best practice. And in terms of um, how the scoring model works, um, for a score of three, we would expect regulations to be met. But within the the wider key question, it's potentially possible for there to be breaches against some quality statements, but they wouldn't necessarily uh, be sufficiently serious to impact the overall uh, rating. So there's a proportionality there. Um, generally, though, if if the seriousness tips us into needing to take some kind of enforcement action, that would generally be enough to mean that you can't actually be good at, at, at key question rating. Now, there's always uh, case by case considerations. We always need to be proportionate to the facts. But there's um, just in terms of the principles for for this level of performance, that's uh, that's what that's trying to describe there. If you could take us on to the uh, <coughs> excuse me, the next. So. Um, a score of two or in terms of rating it requires improvement. So this is where we're getting into the kind of, you know, not quite territory. It's it's falling short. It's not it's not right down to the uh, uh, to the serious end, which we'll come to in a moment. But it's, you know, it's patchy. It's inconsistent. Um, it may work well for some groups, but perhaps some groups are excluded from that standard of care. Um, there may be other factors that are, you know, that are impacting that consistency. Um, there may be some risks uh, to people's health, safety, well-being, but perhaps they've not played through or perhaps they're not serious, but there, there may well be some risks here. So we're, again, we're linking back to um, the likelihood of impact on people, whether that's their safety or, or, or well-being or, um, or, or, or their wider experience. And there may at this level be um, one or more breaches of regulations as well. Um, and if you take us on to the uh, the final slide. So um, inadequate, and this is where it's uh, clearly falling short of the standard of care that um, that is expected. So um, if you think about that, that we statement, it, it's it's not true. You know, the, the the care isn't isn't delivering what that commitment, uh, the commitment that that we statement uh, articulates, uh, and there will likely be a serious impact or risk of serious impact on people's health, safety, well-being, and almost certainly there would be. Um, breaches of regulations in this level as well. So those four slides, as I say, are, 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 are kind of almost the DNA really of, of how our ratings approach has worked since it was introduced in 2015. Those are the those are the pillars. Um, 
and this is our best articulation of, of that and we've 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 not published these um we've we've published the long form text you know what this what this looks like if you turn it into ratings characteristics but we've never actually kind of as i say shown what it looks like if you boil it right back down um so you'll see in the questions we come to um um would it would you know would it be helpful to publish those I suspect it, it, it perhaps would it certainly it feels so if we are um only talking about these now on this call um how can we improve those principles though um i can see there's uh, things flashing up in in the chat and so people are already starting to think about this how can we how can we tighten that so everybody is really clear um can we uh, in, in fact do that or is the only way to do that to do that long form uh, narrative of the ratings descriptors themselves um but before we get to that yeah how can those principles be tighter how can we be more specific in what we mean um at those different levels and in particular in relation to what does what does going above and beyond mean what does outstanding actually mean um what we what we often hear is that people know that when they see it that's that's not good enough. We need to be able to to codify that and to capture that um, better uh, than than we've been able to to date. Uh, and the other two questions that we'd like to consider in in your groups: um, this slide with the matrix on the kind of the table that sets out the diff what we've what we've published and and what we're working on. <clears throat> um, do, do, the, do those products meet your needs? Any thoughts on any of those? Um, uh, you know the the sector specific um topics that we've already published guidance on um are there gaps there is there anything about how uh, that is formatted and and set out how you access that um anything at all about uh, how we how we set out what the different levels of performance look like uh, for your context and how that can be uh, improved so yeah really that's question four as well what's what's what could be improved what's what's missing Do we have people back in the room? I think we perhaps, I think we perhaps do. Um, you can't tell me, can you really? <laughs> I, think I have to assume that, I have to assume at the back. I hope you had uh, good and rich conversations. I'm sure um, lots of things were covered uh, beyond the core scope of today and that's brilliant. Um, as I said at the start, that won't be lost and we can capture that and there's there'll be other sessions that we'll be running where we want to get as much into the detail as we did today. Um, Sam, I think I'm handing over to you to um, to kind of do a round of uh, feedback. Is that, am I correct there? Yeah, absolutely. Hopefully you can hear me okay. We can indeed, Sam. Yeah, thanks okay, very much. Brilliant. So, um, yes, we really just want to kind of, I think, share some of the kind of key um key bits of feedback that have been coming out of the breakout rooms and maybe have a bit of a reflection on that so if i maybe just kind of bring out a few key points and then dave you might want to kind of come back on them and then we can kind of open out to the people in particular breakout rooms if they have anything else to add does that sound okay that sounds great yeah thanks sam brilliant i think i think it's Probably not a surprise to say that across um, across all the breakout rooms, there was pretty much consensus that publishing the principles would be a really good idea. I think something something that's came out quite strongly is um, a lot of providers would find it really useful to see kind of more of the guidance we give to our inspection teams, so they can have a really good understanding of how they're working, how they're looking at the quality statements, what kind of evidence they're reviewing and how are they arriving at their judgments. So I think there's a kind of a wider question for us about should we be making available a lot more of what we give to our own staff mm. to really help providers understand uh, what to expect really from an inspection or an assessment. Um, I don't know if that's something you're already thinking about, Dave, in, in your work. Is. It's it's one of my bugbears, always has been, uh, that we have you know a kind of a, a a wall between the two, and of course all of it um, generally is uh, is available under freedom of information, but you shouldn't have to do that to to understand our inner workings. The, our approach to the updated guidance we're about to produce 
to help bring the the quality statements more to life is is taking a, a publish externally first approach. So even if that's getting into this is how we would assess this, um, that's just as much for providers and external audiences as, as for our our colleagues. So absolutely, uh, definitely uh, want to do that. Great, fantastic. Um, I mean, we also there was there, I can see there's also a, a fair amount of conversation around. Uh, how kind of sector or service specific we need to be in, in guidance like this as well. So um, a, a recognition that obviously we've we've tried to, a, a big reason for the, the way we've built the single assessment framework is to kind of simplify and streamline um, things from the, from the Chloe's, but also a kind of a view that um, what good or outstanding or requires improvement might look like might actually differ quite a lot between very different types of services. So I don't think there's there's like an easy answer being given here, but like a real kind of urge for us to think carefully about that and think about um, what's most useful for providers. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what what we had before was one set for health and one for social care of ratings characteristics, and actually they were they were pretty much the same thing. So we've not really, you know, we've not taken a revolutionary step here in merging them into one, but we've always had that more specific guidance, um, you know, that, that relates to um, certain uh, services. I think it would be really interesting um, as we as we go away from today and continue to think about this, and please continue to share your thoughts. Well, what are the areas where actually you do need that that special lens and, and for what for what services um you know what, what do we need to draw out um uh, so that we're more specific because it, it will of course look different certain aspects of care will look different in different service models yeah um going back to the principles i think there's also been um quite a lot of consistent feedback that um if they're to be really useful, they probably need to be a lot more detailed than they currently are. So really expand on the points they're making. So they're a lot clearer about what they mean. And as a result, will be less open to interpretation and inconsistency and relying so much on our inspectors' uh, professional judgment, which the worry is that's what creates an inconsistent approach. Yeah. I, I I think that probably is the characteristics themselves. I think I think we'll take that away. Um, if there's anything we can do at that principle level, kind of on some the, the type of stuff that would fit on one slide, and um, how can we make that tighter? I, I, I think probably our answer is how you then really are more specific is it does take more words, really. And I think that's probably the the product is the ratings characteristics and scoring descriptors at for each topic, for each quality statement. Yeah, thanks, Dave. Um, maybe if I just flag one more point and just see if anyone from the group wants to come in and do, do put your hand up if you'd like to come in to add any more detail. I think there was a, there was also a uh, a general point that went across both the the, the principles and the, and the kind of ratings characteristics that we probably should be also looking at this with one eye on the um i think it was the rec one of the recommendations in mike richard's report that we should think about whether one word ratings our use of one word ratings are the right approach going forward and whether there might need to be some changes in that area so there was a bit of a a conversation around mm. um you know how useful is it to produce all these kind of ratings characteristics for maybe a model that might change or shift in the future as well yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, and that's 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 with that's with the government, Department of Health and Social Care, really to, to to change our to change our approach there. But I think that is obviously a very live conversation. Uh, uh, yeah, it's a really good point. Um, does anyone from the group want to come in with any to kind of follow up on any of those points or or add anything else? If you do, you can use the raise hand function to come in, or I might just take some questions from the chat. Uh, Rachel, do you want to come in? Um, just to add one point that um, came up in um, in our breakout room, 
the need for um, you've you've, tu you've touched on the need for for, for transparent sort of simple um, and more detailed um, more detail under those principles. Also, um, a mapping, a clear mapping between the regulations and the quality statements, um, a desire, some desire for fewer quality statements, um, and uh, a very clear mapping to the evidence categories under those quality statements. That was felt to be really, really important for a lot yeah. of people because then it's clear what uh, they need to do and what we're looking for and that those are linked absolutely solidly to the regulations. That was quite a clear ask. Yeah, that's very helpful. Um, we, 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 have, we have published which regulations map to the quality statements at the minute, um, but the evidence category information is not clear um, on, on our website. And our, the kind of the, the partner work to what we're talking about here is, is what does that provider handbook look like? If some of you have heard that language, that's very much where we want to understand how can we better show which evidence categories are relevant, which, you know, what we're going to be looking at. Our group, we're talking a little bit about that as well. We really need to recommit to looking at outcomes for people and not inputs and processes and paperwork just because it's easier to look at those things. Um, we'll definitely come back to you um, on that point about fewer quality statements. What we're going to want to un understand is how how do we kind of use the framework flexibly so it doesn't need to be everything certain things just simply won't apply to some types of services um so let's get better at, at identifying that so that's for another session we'll definitely come back to that thanks dave um i know there's been a couple of questions in the chat about ongoing engagement both around this topic but also some of the other things we're working on that you mentioned at the start of the presentation. So I think it's fair to say we, we are going to be doing more engagement over, you know, October and November. Um, so I know there are there are some sessions in the diary already. Um, I think we'll both look to kind of develop on from this session, but also start to explore some of the other topics that we know we need to make improvements around and um, come back to people who've been involved with a clear view of what's happened with their with their feedback but is there anything else you wanted to say on kind of the future engagement uh, just to echo that really yeah this is um th this is this is the start of a series of uh, of, uh, of pieces of work we need to do with you and with others um to the point that raised in the chat that to help to help us improve the, the actual inspection process itself um we did really, really good co-production and engagement on the actual framework. We worked with over 7,000 people. But then after that point, um, we really sped up at CQC in terms of um, developing the scoring model, um, how the evidence categories played into assessments. All of that stuff was done way too quickly. Um, and th I think the reports have rightly um, shown what 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 happens when, when you do those types of uh, changes at that pace and don't uh, don't engage adequately. So that is what we uh, are looking to address um, and uh, and to make that process work work better. Really, we know we've got a good foundation with um, with with the actual framework of quality itself. It's how we've implemented that, how the model works, how staff are supported to do those assessments needs a lot more attention. And that's what we're rapidly looking at over the next um, three months or so, and also into into next year as we look to longer term improvements as well. Thanks, Dave. Um, if we maybe take one final point from Jay before we wrap up. Do you want to come in, Jay? The things that, how are you there? So it was just linked to a couple of things which were said in our group and what you've said are around what else we're going to do. But there was just lots of um, subjectivity within what's currently set out. And just a really, the, um, the group want, the, the, the discussion we had really we would like some examples, which is, which is what we've heard. There's so much good uh, practice going on and there's a definite desire that people want to learn from others and share that good practice that they're doing there's a lot in terms of like peer review and how that could be mm. that could be supported but then also it made me um think about going on to further sessions that like sharing inspection reports where it's been where a service has been rated outstanding so we can have a look at the learning from that but then that also led on to actually our inspection reports need some work and so it's just around kind of the sorts of sessions that we're are going to be um 
coming up and the, what people want to be involved in. Yeah, definitely. That's that's definitely what we want to get into. I, I can't answer Stella's question right now. I'm really sorry, Stella, to say when we'll complete. I think what you will see is uh, is incremental improvements over the coming weeks and months as as we uh, make internal changes to process which we you know would not be of any interest to you but will just mean that our system works better so that the frequency of assessment in, improves and ratings are more often uh, revisited and updated um we will definitely come out and be much more clear though on actually how are these big pieces of the puzzle going to be addressed and when and what does that mean uh for you um but we're certainly talking about making those big changes um over the next uh uh, coming coming months but we'll definitely be more clear on that i just i can't i can't pretend to have the answer for you now there's a lot of work happening in that space but we're out of time i just want to say thank you again so much um i mean i think it's fair to say cqc needs needs your time and and uh and participation as uh, more than ever um it's the only way we can we can get back to where we want to be uh, and to go beyond that and and to and to deliver a, a good service to you essentially as, as the regulator of, of your services. It, it's uh, hugely uh, appreciated that you took some time this morning to uh, share your thoughts with us and, and participate. And um, thank you very much. And you will you will uh, hear more about how this has been taken forward and look forward to seeing you at some future events as well. But have a good day.